<coughs> in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, whom God amend me, the Lord bestow upon us his blessing, mercy, grace, and wisdom now and ever unto the each all each amen. Today is the second Sunday of the blessed month of Tuba, but actually we read the readings from the second uh, day of the Feast of the Holy Theophany. As you know, we celebrated the feast yesterday um, or Friday night. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the, as Abuna mentioned uh, that night, the Feast of Theophany or Epiphany is, is a big deal in the church. And it was maybe even more of a, import, had more of an important uh, position in the, the hearts of the believers in the early church. And unfortunately, now it's not as much. <clears throat> but with the exception of the Holy Resurrection and the feasts related to the Holy Resurrection, Theophany comes um, to be one of those major f celebrations in the early church, even before the celebration of the Holy Nativity. <clears throat> so, so much uh, importance of, of these feasts that um, instead of like 50 days celebration for the Holy Resurrection, we, we celebrate a second day, and then the third day is a different feast which is tomorrow, um, the wedding of the Cana of Galilee. <clears throat> and so in the church, we celebrate many feasts, um, but they're not all on the same level. They're not all created equal. Um, and for example, we have feasts of the cross twice a year. We have feasts or commemorations of the different saints, um, <clears throat> even sometimes after a, a fast, like of the, for the Holy Virgin Mary and the apostles, uh, as well as um, the celebration of, of the new year in September. <clears throat> Uh, where we celebrate the martyrs. But the Feast of the Lord are on a different level. And even within the Feast of the Lord, the Dominical Feasts, we have two uh, degrees, um, the minor and the major. Um, <clears throat> and um, But these take a special um, position in the church, not just because they are of the Lord, but why? Because the Lord did many things, but we only have 14. Right? So what are so important about those 14 that they bring us to the understanding or they focus on the concept of salvation that the Lord has, has done for us and the Lord has given us. Um, <clears throat> and so that's why these 14 are kind of separate from the other uh, actions um, and uh, things that the Lord had done in his ministry. <clears throat> uh, and among these 14, we celebrate four this month. Um, and many group them into a collection called the Feasts of the Divine Manifestation. Um, we have two major and two minor during this time. Um, and the Lord manifests himself or reveals himself uh, or um, we behold his glory in different ways. Right. So in the nativity, the Lord obviously like manifested himself in the flesh. The incarnate logos uh, took flesh and became man and he dwelt among us. Right, as, And as St. Paul says, without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. So this is like the beginning of the, bless you, the divine manifestation of the Lord. <clears throat> and then in the, a few days later, as you know, on the eighth day, which the eight has significance, as we said before, um, the Lord said, I did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. And then he also points to the new life, the new name, the new relation with God, the new covenant, and the new or the perfect sacrifice, which is himself. <clears throat> so that's why we celebrate um, the, this, this minor feast. And then um, a few days after that, we celebrate the Theophany or um, the, the Epiphany, where the Lord manifested himself as the God of Israel. <clears throat> as St. John testifies, you know, in his, uh, in his testimony, um, which is, uh, detailed in this chapter. Um, so what chapter did you read today from? The Gospel according to St. John chapter 1. And there, and actually, it is just a continuation um, of the, uh, the reading of the Gospel of yesterday uh, because it starts with saying, you know, on the next day or on the following day. So that's why you read it on the second day instead of the readings of the second Sunday of, of the month. <clears throat> Um, but St. John said, I did not know him, but that he should be revealed to Israel. Therefore, I came baptizing with water. And then he said, I saw the spirit descending um, from heaven like a dove and remaining upon him. Because the Lord told him, the one who you see, the spirit descending and remaining on him, 
this is the Christ. This is the Son of God. This is the King of Israel. <clears throat> um, and then so we continue the, the Feast of Divine Manifestation uh, tomorrow, where after the baptism, the Lord began his public ministry um, and through signs and wonders and miracles. Um, and uh, as we will read tomorrow, um, St. John starts his gospel saying on the third day, so in a sense it's the third, the third day of the Feast of the Epiphany. Um, he says, and then later on he says, the, the be this beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee, manifesting his glory. So I just wanted to kind of summarize first why these feasts are kind of um, combined um, in, in this order. And what the main theme of all of them is, is to, to witness and to taste the glory that the Lord is revealing to us. Not, not just 2,000 years ago, but in our life. <clears throat> and as we'll see in the gospel of today, um, the Lord manifests his glory to the disciples after he, he calls them, <clears throat> or in the middle of his calling to them. Um, so the Lord reveals his divine power so we can behold his glory, so we can trust him, so we see what he is offering for our salvation, and we offer ourselves likewise. <clears throat> and so even the term divine manifestation is a loose translation of the word theophany, uh, the revelation of God. <clears throat> okay, um, so just a quote from St. John Chrysostom um, before we go into the gospel of today. Um, so he relates the feasts, the major feasts of the nativity and the theophany, and he says, it is not the day of the Savior's birth that we should call his epiphany. Because back then they were, in a sense, using that term. God revealed himself when he came in the flesh. Um, but St. John Chrysostom says, no, let's reserve this for the, 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 the feast of the baptism of the Lord. He says, but on the day when she was baptized, why? <clears throat> he did not become known to all by his birth. Because who were the first people to witness his birth besides the Holy Virgin and St. Joseph? The shepherds. Right? This was this was not a public revelation. And then later on, the Magi, as we know. Um, <clears throat> and he says, that is why it is not the day of his birth that is called Theophany, but the day on which he was baptized, because it was in public in the Jordan. Maybe, the most likely, the public did not see the, the or hear the voice of God the Father or see the Holy Spirit as a form of the dove. Maybe it was only reserved for St. John the Baptist. But nevertheless, this was his public, um, the beginning of, of his public revelation of, uh, of his divine manifestation. <clears throat> and so um, <clears throat> it continues by saying, I think this is sorry from St. Gregory, the theologian. He says, with the star we ran, with the magi we worshiped, with the shepherds we were illumined, with the angels we glorified him, with Simeon, the elder, um, when they took him in the temple on the 40th day, um, which actually we commemorate um, next month. <clears throat> we took him up in his arms, and with Anna, the aged and chaste, we made our responsive confession. And thanks be to him who came to his own in the guise of a stranger because he glorified the stranger who is us. <clears throat> um, and so um, this is kind of like the theme uh, that we're kind of coming to a close before um, we take a little pause, go back to the annual things, and then start um, this, the, the preparation for the great and holy land. Um, <clears throat> so, um, in the just um, another quote from from Ammonius, he says, "How did we behold his glory?" This is from the the gospel um, in the uh, matins of the nativity feast, which is starts with John chapter one, and like we said, we're continuing. So he says, "How did we behold his glory? We beheld it." Through the star of the Magi, the angels, the shepherds, Anna, Simeon, Gabriel, the miraculous birth of the Virgin, the voice of the Father who witnessed the hymn today, the Spirit descending upon him uh, today or yesterday, and many other divine signs and, and healings. So here he connects the divine manifestation to, um, to all of these celebrations um, and connects them to the one verse we beheld his glory. <clears throat> so basically every feast in our church takes a glimpse of this verse. Um, and um, uh, even the Holy Cross and his divine resurrection are all about this. Um, those who came in touch with the Lord and spoke to him and heard his voice and had their um, lives changed um, <clears throat> were because they, he manifested um, his, himself to them. 
Okay. Um, <clears throat> and I think even every interaction that God has with man um, can go even under the umbrella of this verse. Since God is light and love and salvation and power and a consuming fire, we come in contact with his fire. We behold and taste the be his beauty and his glory because um, he wants to reveal himself to his beloved. <clears throat> um, and so um, continuing that theme, we see what happens today. So on the next day, what happened as St. John describes, he says, again, the next day, John stood with two of his disciples and looking at Jesus, he and, and looking at Jesus he, as he walked, he said, behold, the Lamb of God. Um, and so St. John, the, as we said before, John, John the, the, the Baptist had disciples, but then he pointed uh, to the Lord to, to direct his, his disciples to be the Lord's disciples. <clears throat> uh, and two of them heard him speak and began to follow the Lord. Um, and Jesus turned and seeing them following him said, what do you seek? They, they said to him, Rabbi, which is to say, translated teacher, where are you staying? Basically, they're saying, we want to be your disciple. Um, try us out. Let us try you out. So they they did for for a lengthy part of the day, as John the Beloved uh, testifies in his gospel. He says up until the 10th hour, which was most of the day. <clears throat> and it says they came and saw where he was staying and remained with him that day. Um, so this is, in a sense, the, 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 their, their calling. And as we know, the, the first called was who? We know? St. John? No, actually. St. Andrew, he's called the, 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 first, the first one who was called. <clears throat> and then later on, as we read in the gospel, I, I didn't put it here, but as we read in the gospel of today, then he brings his brother, Simon Peter, um, and th there were uh, several of them, uh, four, that, that are mentioned um, in, in particular uh, today, in the Gospel of today. And we know that Christ called his disciples to him, but I wanted to point out that um, not all were called in the same manner, and each had a unique and personal experience with him in beholding his glory. Um, as, as Andrew was called, he, he heard from John the Baptist, he said, go to him, um, and then they followed, and then they saw, and then they testified, and then they, you know, stayed with him that day. Then they're like, okay, um, he is, um, I will follow him um, the rest of my life. <clears throat> it was a gradual process, though, because it started with their um, um, teacher, in a sense, before. And so, for some people, this is how their walk with God starts, right? <clears throat> On the contrary, um, when St. Philip um, came to the Lord, so they brought Philip to him, and the Lord said to him one word or one phrase, follow me. That was all it took, and he, and, and he did, right? Um, <clears throat> for Saul or St. Paul, he had a lot more that God had to, to do with him, um, maybe because he, he was blind in a sense, but so the Lord blinded him with his light, right? And, and for days... He directed him to Ananias um, in a different city, um, and uh, then he was was baptized, and his eyes became open. <clears throat> um, and for the Samaritan woman, for example, it was a conversation about the proper worship, and God revealed to her how He knew about her her past life, um, and that began to stir in her the realization that that. There is a godly person in front of me. He said, I, uh, you're a prophet. And then later on, um, he revealed more, and she believed that he was the son of God. <clears throat> uh, and still for others, he healed them first, and then he transformed their, their minds after um, healing their bodies. So, so what I'm trying to say is that with, with us, we can't necessarily point to someone else and say, I want to have that relationship with God. The point is, I need to have a relationship with the Lord and allow that to grow more and more. Um, <clears throat> yes, discipleship is important, but even when you look at the disciples, their personalities were different and their personal relation with God was different. But someone can't say, um, I'll have my personal relationship with God, but I, I won't go to the sacraments or I won't enter the church 
or I won't hear what the church is trying to direct me. No, that that that, that that's not what we're saying at all. Um, <clears throat> and so um, let's go to what what happened um, further on in the gospel today. It says Philip found Nathaniel, or, um, or it was Bartholomew later, and he said to him, "We have found him, the Messiah." Um, and, Nathaniel, and then, as you know the story, Nathaniel said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said, come and see. He, said, he used the same words that, that Christ used with, his, uh, with Andrew and, and, and the other disciple in the beginning. <clears throat> so they already learned from him. Um, so Jesus saw Nathaniel said, uh, coming toward him and said of him, behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no deceit. Uh, Nathaniel said, how do you know me? Right? So this is the this is the way God revealed Himself to him. This is he, he's describing his person. He says, I, I, I don't know if you know me or not, right? And then the Lord answered and said, Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. So here the Lord is saying, I know you. I know your circumstances. I hear your prayers, and and um, you don't need to worry. You don't need to doubt. You don't need to think that I am far from you because I. I, I hear the depth of your heart and I hear every single prayer that you offer. <clears throat> and I understand what you are feeling and what you are experiencing. I might not be answering, but I know. Um, and so um, the unique thing here is after this, Nathaniel is like, you're, you're God. You're the son of God. You're the king of Israel. So that, that's all it took you know, for me just to reveal a little bit. Um, he said, don't worry. After this, you're going to see much more. Um, so at the beginning um, of, of our relation with God, he, he wants to reveal little, little of himself. But for each person, it's different. Many people try to explain what Nathaniel said or experienced under the fig tree. And even the fathers differ, like St. Augustine, for example, he said he just starts using the example of the fig tree that was, was cursed you know, on, on um, the beginning of Holy Week and says this is just a, a reflection of our sins. Yes, that's a spiritual contemplation. But I think intentionally the, the evangelist leaves out what that personal experience was. It's for Nathaniel, right? Um, but what we know is that after that experience, he was changed and his faith was strengthened and he became a great disciple of the Lord. That's what we need um, to take home. <clears throat> so um, just because we don't see him with our physical eyes doesn't mean that Christ can't see us. Just because we don't hear him with our physical ears doesn't mean he doesn't hear and listen to our prayers. So the question is, well, what is your fig tree? I don't know. But the importance is to have one, to have an experience in the fig tree where you speak to the Lord and maybe you don't even have enough faith that he hears you but later on he will confirm that he has heard and he has answered and he will answer in this way maybe even not the same way that you asked him to um, but the importance is that he he will reveal that to you why because he doesn't want us to doubt in him um, <clears throat> and then the second part is that he says you will see greater things than these this is only the beginning of your relation with god um, continue on with him and you will testify to the, to, to the glory of God, and you will um, taste um, his, his revelation. Um, <clears throat> and um, notice that when, when someone tastes and beholds the glory, what happens? They immediately share it with others. That's why the, the number of disciples grew, uh, at least in this passage, you know, from, from one or two to, to, to four or five. Um, because Andrew shares with Peter, brings him to the Lord, Philip found Nathaniel, brings him uh, to the Lord, and each one of them has a personal relation. Um, but then the Lord said, as, as we mentioned, because I said to you, I saw you under the fig tree, do you, not, do you believe? You will see greater things than these. Um, so realize that this is not the end of the spiritual life, but the beginning. Um, and uh, you will see greater than things than these in your life now, but even in, in the life to come, which is more important. Um, <clears throat> so just to conclude, again, St. Gregory the Theologian, he says, now we come to another action of Christ, another mystery. I can't restrain my pleasure. I am fascinated with God. Almost like John, I proclaim good tidings, for though I am not the forerunner, yet I am from the... So basically saying, I'm not John the Baptist, but I'm, I'm having a taste 
of what he saw and witnessed. He says, Christ is illumined, let us shine forth with him. Christ is baptized, let us descend with him, you know, with, um, in, in humility, that we may also ascend with him. Um, uh, and this is how kind of we, we, we remember the, the feast of the glorious theophany. Uh, and St. John Chrysostom also teaches us how to celebrate. He says, let us venerate today the baptism of Christ and let us keep the feast well, not in pampering the belly, but rejoicing in spirit. How shall we indulge, wash you, make you clean? Psalm 50. If you are scarlet with sin, be made white as snow, become white as wool. Uh, and that's why we dress with white in, 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 in the feasts. Um, and back in the day, it was the whole church that would come to the church uh, on the, on, especially on the feasts, dressed in, in white clothing. <clears throat> he says, anyhow, be purified and you shall be clean. For God rejoices in nothing so much as the amendment and salvation of man on whose behalf is every discourse and every sacrament. Um, <clears throat> so the Lord is the one who makes us clean and pure and sanctified. If we confess our sins, he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. <clears throat> and what is the point? Like, like we kind of manifested the light on, on the feast of the, the nativity after being in darkness for a while. But he says, what is the purse that we might be the light of the world? Uh, that you may be like lights in the world, a quickening force to all other men, that you may stand as perfect lights beside that great or the true light and may learn the mystery of the illumination of heaven. <clears throat> so um, actually these feasts used to be called the festival of lights and that the newly baptized would carry the, the, the torches or, or, or candles, um, similar to the candles in the procession, because the church is supposed to be filled with light. One of the deacons came up on the feast and said, can we turn off the lights again? I said, no, it's, we're supposed to be filled with light. If God chooses to, to take out the darkness and, and we experience the taste of, of the manger, that's a blessing from above. But theologically, the church has to be filled with light. <clears throat> Um, especially on the feasts. Um, so um, may, may the Lord give us um, a taste of his glory um, during this blessed time, but also every day um, of our life until we celebrate with him in paradise. And glory be to him now and unto the age of